Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited. So you drove also, Kelly drove all the way down to do this podcast. <laughs> so I'm feeling very blessed. Right oh. So, okay. So you're a mom of two. Yes. How old are your children? Um, Charlie is five. So she's my daughter and Jackson is three. So, so you're busy. Yep. You're we're in, in, you're in it. We're in the trenches. Yeah. Yes. And you own a business, yes. which we'll talk a little bit about. And you do CrossFit, which we'll talk a little bit about. Let's talk about, let's start with your business. So tell me how you ended up owning and running a business. Um, so I kind of fell into the real estate world and joined a team um, here in the Treasure Valley where I was their in-house like executive assistant. I did everything, marketing, transactions, all of it. And I loved it. And the leader of the team kind of took me under her wing and just, I grew so much personally and professionally in those years and loved where I was at. Um, But then I had my first child and time became even more valuable. And I wanted to be able to have a more flexible schedule and have more time in my life to um, work with my family and my kid, my husband and um, daughter. And so I decided to, I was really scared. It was really scary. Um, But with the encouragement of my husband, I decided to start my own business with a one-year-old at home. And (laughs) yeah. Um, And we pretty much just looked at it like, okay, this is what you make in your current position. This is the base amount that you have to get in your business in order for it to financially work. And so those were just like, and I mean, I was just looking at like really base amount Mm -hmm. of like, okay, this is what we need. Um, and it was really scary because prior to that, a year prior, I had Charlie and I went part time. So the past year before starting my own business was like kind of a scary financial situation of like, how much money do you need for raising a family? And we just went yeah. to part time, like all these things. Um, but yeah, I went for it and started my own company and it's been amazing. And and I miss that team and those people, but I love being a business owner, there's so many challenges, um, but I love it. And it was the right call. So. so talk about that mentally. Cause that's a, that's a really scary place. And I think that there's probably a lot of people that will be listening in that are trying to make that decision or they've just made that decision and they're in the middle of the scary yeah, um, where it's not producing yet what yeah. they need it to, or what they want it to. how did you get through that? Um, so before I went totally out and did it on my own, I called someone who owned a business, a transaction coordinator business. And I'm so grateful to this person because we only had one conversation, but she put so much like hope and like inspiration in that I can do this. Mm -hmm. And I was fired up after that call. I like woke up every morning for like three weeks, just like fired up and writing notes of how I think I could grow it. But it still was scary because I didn't know if it would actually work. Like, I'm like, well, she was successful, but was it the timing? Is it like she had, you know, whatever it may be. Um, So I took that leap of faith Mm -hmm. um, and I just knew what I needed to do because of being in that industry. I, I watched how people were successful and I knew if I just took those steps that I probably would be successful. And I, but I told myself too, that if I'm not successful, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like I felt confident that I could even maybe go back to that team because I ended on good terms or I could go find another team or I could switch gears and get into a whole new industry. Like I just felt comfortable that my husband and I, up until that point in our life, we'd had hard years and good years with finances and we always figured it out. And so I just felt comfortable that we would figure it out. And so, but it was scary. Yeah, it's scary. It's hard. And so if someone's in that position, I'm saying, go for it. Yeah. Just go for it. Obviously protect your family and, but go for it and see if it works. Um, Cause it's better to go for it than to regret. And he had been pushing me for years prior. And I was just like, no, no, no. And I'm glad I didn't because I think it was the right time. It gave me more time to learn and grow. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe Yeah. So I listened to, I listened to a lot of podcasts and, um, I was listening to one this week that said, 
if you have something in your head and it keeps coming back to you, you need to just go for it. Yeah. Because what happens when you get five, 10, 20 years down the road and you didn't, and you just always have that question, like yeah. what if I would have, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who don't because yeah. they don't take that leap. And and the world's missing out on what those people have to offer. offer. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the things that you said that I hear from a lot of women is you had someone that really fed belief into you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And what I think, a blessing. Yes. And I think, it, yeah, it probably would have been a lot, a lot harder and a lot different if I didn't have, yeah, the mm-hmm. support system and stuff. So, so you start the business. Yeah. How... It wasn't immediately successful. So talk about your growth in that and and the hurdles, because you said, and really hard. Yeah. Owning a business is challenging. Yeah, it's really hard. I think a lot of people think, oh, like, <laughs> and right now I actually have a lot of guilt because I've, I've got to this place in my business that I'm so grateful and excited for. But sometimes I have guilt because I live in this amazing small mountain that I go ski in the afternoon because I've worked really hard to build up my life and business to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have new agents that start working with us that they'll like make comments of like, oh, it seems like all you're doing is skiing. And I think they sometimes don't know the years that I put in before that. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that I'm up at 5 a.m. and working for five hours and then I go ski. Mm -hmm. Um, But to answer your question, yeah, it wasn't immediately successful. Um, I had to go out and find the, find the agents and find people. And I had some come to me just from my history, from the team I was on before, but I had to go find business and there was some really, so I started like fall of 2018 and then I got pregnant for, with my second child Mm -hmm. and had to deal with how am I going to do maternity leave? Like I just brought on all these agents and now I I wanted to have a maternity leave Mm -hmm. and I was struggling with that. And I hired my first person like six or eight weeks before my maternity leave. And like three weeks before my due date, we knew it was not the right fit. And I'm freaking out because I told all my agents, like I have this person in place. It's all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And it was real. It was really hard, um, but we figured it out. I got. I. I had another TC. You know, just people want to work, help, and work together. And and so I reached out to another TC who took coverage. Like she covered my agents. Everything was great and fine. There, there's a few hiccups, but it was mostly smooth. Um, and then, yeah. Then I hired who I still have on my team, Melissa, who's amazing. And I'm so grateful because if I would have had another bad hire, it maybe would have crushed my whole dreams of having leverage. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm so grateful I brought her on. Um, But then COVID hit. And so I just brought Melissa on and we're like, okay, we're going to get more business for her and we're going to do this. And COVID hits and everybody in the real estate world panics and thinks our industry is going to shut down. Like everybody's going to be without jobs. And so we're panicking for like March and April and it does the exact opposite. Right. It went crazy. Yeah. Summer 2020, Melissa and I would like call each other, like crying at night because we'd been like 13 hour days and like, but, um, but it was obviously a blessing. Like it's mm-hmm. having too much business is, is good. Um, but we had to do infrastructure, figure things out, work through it, just kind of survive. And then it kind of slowed down a little bit to where we could really build out our systems, improve things fix, you know, do a lot. Um, so we did a lot of infrastructure, brought on another person. And, and then that's where we're at now. Is It's so is interesting, good. right? I think that because there's there's the stress of not growing enough and there's a stress of growing too much. Yes. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's never going to be perfectly balanced yeah. in the middle. So yeah. dealing with that and making the adjustments and handling it well so that your clients yes. feel Don't. attended to. So, yeah. so you, we've talked a lot about your business growth, but you had mentioned something before we got on camera about um, your cancer and about CrossFit. So yeah. let's kind of go into CrossFit a little bit and yeah. tell me how did you, you're obviously very, very active. You hike, you ski yeah. and you do CrossFit. So yeah. how did you get, int- how did you get involved? And then yeah. tell me what that's done for you mentally. Cause I think that that piece for a lot of people will be really impactful to hear. Yeah. Um, my husband got me in, um, I was, I played high school soccer and, and hiked and grew up just being active, you know, Idaho girl, like, Mm -hmm. um, but then after high school, I definitely floundered a little, like I was in college and trying to figure out like, Oh, how do I 
stay in shape. What's staying in shape like? Um, and I still did the mountain biking and the hiking, but not as much. Um, and so my husband, he's a physical therapist and he's always been very physical and into like, um, personal training and all the things. And he discovered it and was like, and I was like, no, <laughs> no, like I can't go to this gym because I couldn't even do a push up or a pull up. Like I was, I just was like, absolutely not. And he kind of slowly wore me down and got me in there. And, um, and it was, it was life changing. Um, and not to be the like, Crossfitters love to talk about CrossFit, but there is a reason is it mentally helped me so much. Um, I grew personally from it. I mean, you just go in every day not knowing what you're going to do and you have to do really hard, uncomfortable things. And I'm a type of person who pre-CrossFit, um, I really like to stay in my comfort zone and I didn't, I didn't like to get uncomfortable and the, you have to in the gym. Um, but it was really good because then when I got diagnosed with cancer at 28, like really young, um, it's all unknown and you don't know yeah. what the journey is going to be like. And you can, you can read, but you don't know how chemo is going to affect you and you don't know what it's going to be like. And I felt so grateful to have had the mental and physical training in the gym and life, mm-hmm. but especially in the gym to help me, um, deal with that that challenging year of going through chemo and cancer and all of that and stuff. And so, yeah, it was really important. And it, and it helped me too through babies and finding a community and just so much of it. And then it's also helped me with my business, um, you know, just mentally knowing the, the mm-hmm. mental growth that I've had through it. It's helped me with that. I was going to ask you that, so. the mental strength that it takes to do that. Yeah. I want to ask you about cancer though, because you yeah. were diagnosed young. Yeah. And what... How do you think, I think that cancer is one of those things. I've never had cancer, but I have two very close to me that have. And you watch people handle it so completely differently. And especially for someone so young, what was that like? Um, It was scary and hard, but I was lucky in the sense that they made the doctors made it pretty clear. Like we feel very confident you're going to live. So once I got that out of like, okay, am I going to live at the end of this? Then it was just, I'm a, I'm a doer. Like, I'm just like, I mean, the story of when I found out I had cancer is my husband would probably kill me if I share it. But like, I get the call and I have cancer. I'm like, Oh, um, okay. Like nobody thought that I had cancer. Like they, I almost didn't even do a biopsy, but one doctor was like, I think you should just do it to be safe. So I wasn't even worried waiting for the biopsy results. And then they call me and I'm like, oh, um, okay. All right. So then of course, the next thing I do is call my husband and he doesn't answer. So then I call my mom, who's very much like me and she cries a little, but mostly we are just like, okay, so what's the next step? Like, what's our checklist? What do we do? How do we get through this? Yeah. And we're just like talking. And then, um, I call, or then my husband calls back and I, he's at work and I share with him. And he's like, oh, okay, you know, all right, well, we'll we'll talk about it. So I just go back to work. I'm like, all right, I'll just go back, do my emails and stuff, no big deal. Then my husband calls me and he's like bawling and driving home. And he left work and was just like, we're like, we got to hang out and stuff, you know? And so it was really nice to have both sides of it because I'm more of a doer and he's a doer too. He's very much a doer, but he brought this, like, this is an emotional hard time. Like let's, we need to be together. And mm-hmm. anyways, um, but to get through it, we were an amazing team. We didn't have kids yet. And he was just there by my side and my parents were by my side and, you know, they came down, we were living in Colorado. So I had an amazing support system from the gym, um, the CrossFit gym. We had a lot of support, but just, it was just about just what's the next step. For me, it was what's the next step. And I had people there to help and support and, um, and get through it. And I just knew that I was going to live and it was just like, okay, this is just a sucky time and we just need to get through it. And, Mm -hmm. um, but the, the thing too, though, I tried to not just, just get through it. I tried to also continue to live during that time. Um, because before I got into it, into chemo and stuff, I read so much where people were like, it's just a year or so, you know, depending on your treatment, like just take time and just relax. And it sucks. And I'd read all this stuff and it was so scary to me. And then when I was in it, I was like, you could still live. Like I was, I still went out and hiked 
it was just a slower pace. Mm -hmm. I still went to the CrossFit gym and some days I didn't. Some days it was like, no, my body needs to just literally lay on the couch. Mm -hmm. But other days I was still able to go live life and be out there. Um, And so I tell people who are about to go into their cancer treatment that you don't have to think that you're gonna spend every day um, just on the couch. And it also taught me too, just because you have one bad day doesn't mean the next 20 or 50 or 360 are going to be bad, Mm -hmm. um, which helped me with motherhood. I was Um, gonna say there's a lot of, there's a lot of application in a lot of areas of life with that. Yeah, it was very important lessons that I was grateful to learn when it was really only me and my husband. So then when Mm -hmm. we had kids, you know, and you have a bad day and you're like, this is what it's going to be like. For this the is what life yeah. is going to be. Yeah. When, when you're, Why did it happen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so, yeah. So it was really helpful with that. And you and I are in very different stages because yeah. I have teenage kids. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, oh. when we get to the teenage years. Don't be scared. But. I feel like the stage that you're in, if you, it, it's just, a, it's just different. Yeah. 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 I'll, Blessings every step along the way. Yes. Yeah. And challenges every step along the way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In the in the short five years, I've definitely seen that. There's each stage is like, this is great for this, and this is not great for this mm-hmm. and stuff. So I assume it will be the same when they're teenagers. So one of the questions I always ask is when you hit six figures. So when you did that with your business, yep. not working for someone, but with your business, what did that feel like to you? Was that an emotional thing? Um, it was, it, so I do like my monthly numbers and weekly numbers and stuff, but it was that like summer of 2020 and I couldn't even really do anything about it because we were just in pure survival. Mm-hmm. It was just like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Okay. I don't have time to dwell on this. Like I just have to go take care of business. <laughs> um, but what was really cool was, um, just to like, cause I never got, I never went to school to like, I never really th- thought I would have some successful business. I was never career driven. Mm -hmm. Um, I always just wanted to be like a photojournalist and take pictures and write about it and be like, I don't care if I make money. And, and then I didn't know what to do with my life. I floundered a lot in school. I was, I was really good at school, but I didn't know a route. Like my husband was like, I want to be a physical therapist Mm -hmm. and this is the way I need to go. Where I was definitely in college. Like, I don't know what I want to do. And um, so it was really cool to like see the growth of the business and see the hard work and especially that year of just a lot of hard work and be like, oh my gosh, I never, like I said, when I started the company, I was like, okay, this is the bare amount I have to do to replace my income. And then to see it go to this was like, both my husband and I were like, whoa, this is really crazy and cool. And we were just so grateful we took the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, it was once I had time to sit and think about it months after it happened, we were really grateful. Um, and so, so yeah. take the leap basically take the yeah. leap for yeah. sure. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, if it doesn't work out, if you don't make the, if you don't hit your goals, like reassess and figure out how you can try again mm-hmm. or worst cases, you just go back to doing what it was before. Something else. You always yeah. learn. That's the thing that I try to convey to people all the time is I don't really think fail. I think we're so big on, Oh, I failed. You really didn't fail. You learned a ton. Yeah. And maybe it's prepping you for the next thing or something that you haven't even thought of yet. Or you meet that person that are like, oh, and it takes you in a totally different direction, right? Yeah. It's just Making, putting yourself out there. Yeah. 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 And like you said, if you don't do it, you're always going to wonder, what if? Mm-hmm. What if? I would have done it. Should I have done it? It's like, we'll go find out. It's better to find out and fail and learn from it than to always wonder what if. Yeah. So So mom tip. What's your best mom tip? Mom tip. Um, Probably kind of what I touched on that, like, just because it's a bad day today does not mean it's in a phase that you're going to have months and months of bad days. Um, And you're not alone. Like, Mm -hmm. I think when I first had my kiddo, I didn't have a lot of mom friends yet. And my sister and brother are a lot older, so they, they, they're, you know, have like teenagers. So I had moments of feeling like I was alone. Um, and then I made mom connections and was like, I mean, they're my, my 
world outside my you know my family and stuff but like we get together and we're like we're in it together yeah um we've like nicknamed like type four fun is what we do with our kids is like we take them outside and it's just chaos and stuff but yeah you're not alone find some people that you can connect with and go through the journey with Mm -hmm. um and that yeah just because it's not and start them young if you want to get them outside so far i've seen like okay my kids know the deal with skiing and hiking and doing the things we like, which if they don't aren't into that when they're older, that's fine. But right now they just go along with what you do. Right. And because we started them young and they're just like, okay, so this is life. This yeah. is what they know life to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Yeah. So book or podcast, do you have a recommendation of a book that has been impactful or that you recommend a lot? or a podcast. I know, especially busy moms. When I ask about books, I always think, like, when do they actually read a book? Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> audiobooks. I definitely, po- that's why I love yeah. podcasts. Is podcasts and audiobooks have been, because I, I do got to go take the dog for a walk. I can actually listen. Mm-hmm. Um, some books I love, um, I like Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, mm-hmm. um, which maybe I like more for my CrossFit side, but I definitely have used it in my business life when stuff gets hard. It's mm-hmm. like he has a lot of lessons of like, you know, when life is hard or when you're in challenging situations. Um, so I really like his book. Um, Mindset um, was a great book that I've always really liked. And um, podcasts, obviously your podcast, I really enjoy listening to all the amazing women that you bring on. Um, I also like, again, this is a CrossFit specific one, it's a CrossFit coach. It's called Chasing Excellence, but they touch a lot on not just CrossFit stuff. Yeah. Um, and I learned a lot of valuable lessons from there. That's a um, neat one. Yeah. Yeah. That's I've not cool. listened to that one. I'll have to add that. Yeah. I mean, there's you're going to have to definitely go through if you're not a CrossFit because <laughs> you'll be like, they're talking about like CrossFit things, but then there are valuable ones that are like mindset and, mm-hmm. um, you know, other like personal growth stuff that I think has a lot of valuable stuff. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then in the real estate world, I love the one thing. So a lot of people who are business owners, like that's a mm-hmm. really great one to teach you about time management and such stuff a like great that. book. Yeah. Yeah. So those are kind yeah. of some of my favorite ones. So what didn't I ask? Anything that I didn't ask that you would want to share that you think would be impactful? Um, I guess the only thing that, you know, to share with people and it's my, I call it my life statement is to inspire others to live their life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. So I share a lot about like, oh, I'm into hiking and CrossFit. That's, I'm not trying to be like, go do this. But I really try to share um, in my stuff of like, you can have it all. I truly believe that Mm -hmm. you can have it all. It's exhausting. It's a lot of work, um, as you know, (laughs) um, from the kids to the businesses, to the hobbies, to the family, but you can have it all. You just got to figure out what it is that you want, Mm -hmm. like what sets your soul on fire and figure that out and then figure out how you get it. So figure out the systems that you put into place in your life Mm -hmm. um, to get you there. And then you can have, and yeah, you're going to be tired and exhausted. But (laughs) my take is I'm like, I'd rather be tired and exhausted and had some epic day or week or adventure, whatever time frame, then, and that's, that's mine. That's for me then uh-huh. to not have done it and to just, um, not taking the leap of faith, whatever it may be, business, life, relationships. So. That's so funny. A friend of mine years ago sent me this quote that said, I'm going to end life with my hair on fire, skidding into the plate with yeah. wrinkles everywhere. Like she was just talking about exactly that. Like, yeah live (laughs) just live (laughs) yeah exactly it's like get out there and stuff and if your version of living is laying on the couch and reading a book that's awesome but i feel like there's so many of us that are just surviving and or just got into a job that then they stay in that job and they're like oh well you know i make it work and stuff and they're not really assessing their life like Mm -hmm. is this a life you're proud of that's making you happy. It's what you want. Mm-hmm. Like figure that out and then go after it and and you can do it. Yeah. You can take the leap of faith and you can get it. So thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you yeah. for doing this. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate it. It was fun.